So now we're in a question. So, question. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I noticed when I was coming in, there's a, if you look out the window, there's a bunch of folks demonstrating down there, and this uh, lady over here, I think, uh, raised issue as to why they're down there. And I think it's important. I don't know. I, I was just handed a leaflet, and I think it's important that some of what's in this leaflet is at least on record for this meeting. So I'm just going to read a little bit of it. I don't know. Have you read this leaflet that they're handing out? Um, I don't know. Gail, yeah, yeah, I know, can speak very intelligently on this, but you can speak more if you'd like. Okay, well, yeah, I'd just like to read this. So, dear Mr. Parker, this is for the record. Since assuming your role as CEO of the new American Airlines, you have been relentless in your pursuit of dismantling the benefits and financial security that American employees work 20, 30, or more years to achieve. Now, I must say I know a lot of American Airlines employees, so I understand what this leap of the saying is the truth as far as what people have been telling me. Starting with your attempts to terminate the company commitment to retiree health benefits and now with your inexplicable campaign to take away cost-neutral flight benefits, it has become increasingly clear that your promises of inclusionary discussions regarding any changes to employee benefits were both empty and hypocritical. Recently published proxy information made available to stockholders reveals that while retirees with decades of dedicated service are being told that their travel benefits will be slashed, non-employee board members, those folks who have reserved seats, I guess, the non-employee board members who have served as few as five years will receive lifetime confirmed system-wide first-class travel in addition to complimentary Admirals Club memberships an executive platinum frequent flyer status. I'm sure they couldn't afford this themselves, uh, but uh, I'm certainly happy you're treating them all well. And I'll end with this. And just to add further insult, this perk, possibly worth millions of dollars over a lifetime, is extended to the family members of, as well. I don't begrudge the board members and the family members getting it. If I do begrudge it, when you take it away from the retirees and the employees, things that were promised them many years ago. Again, it's just another example, and not just you, Mr. Parker, but the board that rubber stamps the policies of this company. This is absolute greed, greed, and you are destroying this country with that greed. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Gail, since he's spoken on behalf of the retirees, he's not a retiree. Do you want to speak on behalf of the retirees? Thanks. Uh, Gail Dunham, um, retiree. Um, earlier, I had given to Mr. Johnson a couple of handouts, and he assured me that he would direct them and give them to the board members, and I hope you'll read them, and I hope you'll consider, and I hope you'll consider our requests. Um, I think that the American Airlines shareholder meeting should be held at the corporate office in Dallas. It's cost prohibitive for employees and retirees to be here by 9 o'clock in the morning to fly in and to pay for a hotel. I hope you'll do this in Dallas next year. I, yeah, Mr. Parker may disagree, but I think that there's the appearance to avoid retirees and employees by having it in New York City. Um, the retirees are asking the American Airlines Board of Directors to review the decision made by Elise Everwine, which had no, almost, almost no employee retiree input. Uh, that discriminates against retirees. It's a radical change in the past benefits for the AA employees and the retirees of what we were promised. It is a radical change. There was no cost-benefit analysis, and it greatly expands all these free passes, which devalues the American Airlines product. You're saying we're running, an, our single focus is to run an airline. So the worst thing to do would be to devalue the product by, by this uh, unbelievable amount of free, free travel. Um, what is the loss of revenue for no service charges? What's the revenue that AA received from the D3 travel? Where's the statistical analysis that fewer D3 means people are going to buy tickets on AA? I don't think that's true at all. And what is the loss um, of the, uh, what's the, what is the, the loss of service charge with, the, with this far greater number of free D2s? I think these are good questions to ask. Um, Mr. Parker had said that it wasn't necessarily 
based on cost. He was trying to be fair. But it's not fair when the, when the American Airlines retirees have been downgraded 100% in all categories. But, you know, I think that's kind of a sad thing. This, you may get in trouble because we've got this pathetic pilot pay. So if you say, well, the past decision was made with no cost-benefit analysis, um, it's just contradictory. And, uh, you know, I think uh, you've got to backpedal on that. What we would, we prefer the American Airlines pass policy. It was the very best in the industry, um, everything about it. And it worked well. The technology was there. The service charges provided a revenue source in the D3s. If not, we believe that the retirees should be grandfathered in for what we were promised. The new policy greatly expands the family and friends eligible for passes. It will make it more difficult for employees and retirees to get on flight and for all of our full fare passengers. Just know there's going to be a whole lot more free people on board. New hires will, unlimit will have immediate, unlimited free flights for themselves, their spouses, domestic partners, significant other, parents, step-parents, grandparents, and more. There's 10 categories for children to travel D2. And there's no maximum number of D2s. For retirees, most of us, our children travel the D3s, which are limited. So we've got these 10 categories of children that are all going to be free D2s. Dependent, non-dependent, natural born, adopted, wards of the state, foster children, stepchildren, foreign exchange students for employees, and each additional a spouse, domestic partner, or significant other, their children also fly free, all free from the first day of work. American Airlines had a waiting period of six months. We felt, that, and I still, and I think all the American people feel this way, we feel it's most important that a new employee spend their time learning their job, not learning how to non-rev on JetNet. The most important thing should be to learn their job, and after six months, have, it's a privilege. And then wait two years for the D3s so that they truly respect where they're going. I'm going to have to stand by, if I can get on flights, after foreign exchange students and all these peripheral family members who have nothing to do with the airline. All they want is free flights. Boy, you have your Facebook friends there. If you're wondering how to qualify for some of these things, go to rocketlawyer.com and you'll see all the forms that you can just print out on your own. Um, Lisa had said, <laughs> To accommodate the increased number of total people flying for free D2, there will be fewer D3s. Since parents, qualified children, registered companions, spouse, domestic partner, travel, they no longer count for D3 buddy passes. So all of your D3 passes can be used by other friends and family. And I don't think you should financially embrace this. This is a very, very important thing for the company. Uh, you don't. I don't want new, new employees that are only interested in flying for free. Um, one other thing, I'm, I'm going to change hats if I may. I happen to be executive director for the National Air Disaster Alliance and Foundation, PlaneSafe.org. We represent thousands of members worldwide. We were incorporated 19 years ago by aircraft survivors and family members. We just returned from uh, two trips to Beijing. We're working with the Malaysia 370 family members there. We work, we're the only organization, the only family member, and the only independent organization on the FAA rulemaking committees, the TSA rulemaking committees, and more. We've accomplished a lot in 19 years. But I have to tell you, when I put on my air safety and security hat, I have to tell you, I have serious concerns about the aviation security, where you have family members, where have all these new hires, and their extended family members can immediately fly free. How do you know who these people are? Are you going to rely on airport security? I think there's a higher standard. I think the six-month wait for a pass and a two-year wait for the D3, I think that's important for air secu aviation security. Someone said, well, US Air is doing it. We haven't, we haven't had problems. That's not how you respect aviation security. You don't say, well, we haven't had a problem yet. You know, and the six-month wait, if someone can't wait six months for a free pass, then maybe they shouldn't be an employee. Because the most important thing is the company, the company safety, the company security, the company profitability, and realize that it's the employees and the retirees that made this country great, this company great. Thanks, Gail. And I'd like to thank Mr. Parker for talking with us outside a little bit today. That's thank nice. You. Thank you, Gail. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is Bob Crandall. 
On the other side of this record is the theme song for a new advertising campaign which will begin on March 17th. I've sent you this recording so that you and your family will have an opportunity to hear our new song before the campaign breaks. You'll be seeing and hearing the words, Wear American Airlines, doing what we do best in all our ads, television, radio, and newspaper. This slogan will be the basis of all our advertising for a long time to come. It has been developed after a great deal of careful customer research, and its message is simple. American is the finest airline in the world because our people are committed to excellence. It's a powerful message, but to be effective, it must be true. And only the people of American can make it true. The message is people-oriented because American Airlines is its people. What we do best is provide a safe, efficient, personal service. We wouldn't be able to do that without conscientious, hard-working, and above all, friendly people, thousands of them. You'll see that the heart of our new advertising campaign is the real people who are pictured and heard. The people you'll see in our ads are not out-of-work actors or Madison Avenue models, but American Airlines people like yourself. Not only do they convey our message to the customers we want to reach, their obvious competence and warmth is the message. In a service business like ours, nothing is as important as the commitment, attitude, and competence of our people. Our customers know that, and they tell us about it in their letters. They don't write about our airplanes or our terminals. They take the time and effort to let us know about the American Airlines people they've met, the people who go out of their way to be particularly friendly and helpful. This year, we want to reach both our loyal customers and those who haven't been flying American regularly, who have been taking their business to somebody else. We want to let everybody know that if they're not flying with us, they're not flying with the best. I hope you'll agree that this new approach in advertising will help persuade people to give American a try. When they do, please do everything you can to make their trip with us so memorable they'll come back to American again and again. We know we're the best. Let's prove it to every passenger and shipper we serve in 1975. We're American. 